goes and oh, may find out her and Mako are actually friends, and that her mother still holds a grudge against her for saving someone instead of winning a sport. There's then a flashback scene with a Panzer II, an early war German tank that saw service on all fronts with multiple variants, making him a fine tank in the show is a Renault This French tank from World War I was the first to feature the typical layout of tanks you see today, with a driving compartment, fighting compartment, and engine compartment, without great success in the battlefields of World War I. Back in 2014, I saw a video called The Problem with Fury. The man behind the video was none other than Potential History. Potential History is without a doubt a huge inspiration on my channel, and if not for him, I could have become a Veribu, Kamibu, or worst of all, a Croissantabu. Potential History is the one who introduced me to Girls and Panzer in the first place, and since it's been 5 years since he did the history behind Desphanel 1, I think it's safe to say he's probably not going to make another one, so I thought I could take the mantle of responsibility and do a small series on Desphanel. Also, I got permission to continue the saga, and he also said he wasn't going to do another one. If you think this is going to live up to Potential History, then prepare to be disappointed as the production quality of my videos are a subpar at best. Imagine this as a continuation from Potential History, so whatever he said in his videos, I won't be mentioning here. You have to watch his videos first if you already haven't. Anyway, this is the history behind Dust Finale 2. The episode opens up with BC Freedom driving in formation with the commander and both sub-commanders Frenching about how they bamboozled Orai until taking fire from a tree line from Orai's M3 Lee, Chinu, and Mark IV. So they do the French thing and run away. Baby run away, away. While Marie eats cake. After this, Orai discusses strategy and plot and regroups once again to go on the offensive. BC Freedom takes up defensive positions in the Bocage waiting for Orai's advance, which I believe is a reference to the Phony War, where the French pretty much just waited for the German attack. Soon after, Bocage warfare ensues, as the Porsche Tiger, M3 Lee, and Mark IV provide a distraction while the rest of Orai's tanks go around to flank by shooting through hedges, a tactic which was used to great effect by the US during Operation Cobra. The B-1 BIS goes in a completely different direction to commit war crimes. One of the ARLs takes a glancing shot to the turret from the B-1 BIS disguised as a BC Freedom S-35 Samoa. This is a reference to Otto Skirtsny's deception tactic during the Battle of the Bulge, where he modified Panthers to look like US M-10 tank destroyers and Stoop 3s to look like... Uh, a T-28? I mean, modeling companies have dubbed it the Erzatz M-7, but this does not look like an M7. Saying that it looks like a T28 is just wrong, as the Doom Turtle was made in 1945, while the Battle of the Bulge started in late 1944, so I don't know. After taking multiple glancing shots, the ARL is convinced the Outsiders are starting a mutiny, so it fires upon a friendly Samoa S35, taking it out. This starts a civil war between the Escalator students and the ones with a darker complexion and France ensues. During the Frenching, another Samoa and two ARLs are taken out via blue on blue. Marie Antoinette, while eating cake, realizes the racial war that's happening in her backyard, and anime ensues. After the two hot French girls stop bickering, they track down the Serbian war criminals who are then executed, and BC Freedom finally starts playing the match as they try to escape the Bocage. An ARL gets knocked out by the Porsche Tiger while a Samoa gets taken out by the Chinu. Another ARL advances up behind the knocked out ARL and takes out the M3 Lee. The ARL is then subsequently knocked out by the VK-45. Orai's Type 89 spots the enemy's flag tank and tries to go in for the kill, a task in which it utterly fails. The Onion Song starts playing, where the Samoa glances a shot from the Chinu, which it couldn't, the ARL kills the Stuk 3, the S-35 knocks out the Chinu, which is then taken out by the Porsche Tiger. Get down, Mr. President! Shirts are coming, no shit, but that's a war. 
Lastly, BC's flag tank runs into the Mark IV, where Marie Antoinette is executed. As the match ends, a PNG of a Kawasaki Ki-45 flies across the screen, and the whole gang eats cake, because let them eat cake, which is totally a quote a now decapitated woman said. The plot continues as Miho and Pedophile Magnet go to Care Bear Land and Fukuda is invited by the volleyball team to eat, where we see a Pravda poster and a poster of HMS Dreadnought. I thought I was going to skip the mini battles, but there's a lot of tanks I want to talk about, so I'm going to. The first of many mini battles is Koala Forest versus Chihatan. Koala Forest is seen using AC-1 Sentinels. The Sentinel was the Australian response to the rapid Japanese expanse after Pearl Harbor. However, sketches of the proposed tank started in 1940, with production starting in 1942. 65 units were built, however, production stopped a year later when Australia was already getting large quantities of M4A2 Shermans. Fun fact, the suspension on the Sentinel is not the same as the one on the Hotchkiss H35, even though it looks very similar. In reality, it's HVSS. Yes, that HVSS. I mean, yeah, there is a difference, but it's a horizontal volume spring suspension, so by all means, it's HVSS. Also, due to the tank being Australian, it obviously has to have a penis joke. Because why not? The battle starts with Koala Forest taking commands from a literal koala, and Chihatan charging over a hill without us knowing what happens next. The second mini battle is Kuromori Mine versus Maginot High who are the show's second rendition of France, this one being pre-German occupation. Maginot is seen using a Samoa S-35, a Char B-1 Bis, and a Hotchkiss H-35. Designed in 1935 and produced in 1936, around 1,200 were made, and they're most notable for being used by the French during the Battle of France and by the Israelis. Like most interwar French tanks, it only saw very limited success. The battle ends with Kuromori Mine curb stomping Maginot's flag tank. The third mini battle is against Pravda and Viking Fisheries High, the Norwegian team. Viking Fisheries tanks consist of M24 Chaffees and Panzer III's, with their flag tank being the Neube Fetzoig. The new vehicle thing was one of the only multi turret designs the Germans ever put into production, with only five built, two of which were soft steel prototypes. However, the armor was lackluster for its size. It was quite cramped, and the design made it hard to manufacture. As far as combat operations go, it was present during the invasion of Norway, where it was mostly used for propaganda. The match ends with Pravda doing the Russian thing and charging the flag tank. The fourth match is Saunders vs. Blue Division, Gup's version of Spain, who are a fan favorite among the community. I wonder why. Blue Division is seen using CV-35s, Panzer II Alfs Fs, and Verdeja II's. The Verdeja II was Spain's attempt at making a medium tank. However, due to multiple delays, the tank was fully outdated by the time the first and only prototype was made. Also, Spain was getting Panzer IVs and Stugs from Germany, so the Verdeja would have been kinda useless. The match ends with a Sherman 5C sniping Blue Division's flag tank. The fifth match is St. Gloriana vs. Waffle Academy, basically the Belgian team where they are seen using ACM-35s and T-15s. The ACM-35 is a French cavalry tank that saw service in Belgium and France, where it was used to limited success with over 57 units built. The T-15 tankette was a British Carden Lloyd Mod 1934 with a Hotchkiss M1929 machine gun that the Belgians shoved into it. Around 42 T-15s were ever built. The match ends with Rosehip doing a Rosehip and Waffle's flag tank being taken out. Also, the scenery is a reference to a bridge too far. The sixth battle is Yaktasoda vs. Yogurt Academy, the Hungarian team, where Yogurt is seen using T-38s, which are just LTVZ 38s in Hungarian service. Seriously guys, out of all the countries that use the LTVZ 38, you just couldn't have used Czechoslovakia. Yaktasoda's BT-42 does an anime and takes out Yogurt's flag tank. The final mini-match is Anzio vs. Bompel Academy, which is the show's rendition of Poland, where they are seen using TKSs, the Polish version of a CV-33, 7 TPs, which were Vickers 6 tons with either 2 MG turrets or a Bofors 37 in a turret, and an FT-17. Anzio is seen using a Caro Armato P-40, 
which was Italy's last-ditch effort at making a tank that's actually useful, an M41 Semovente, which is the casemate version of the M13, the most produced Italian tank of World War II, and lastly, everyone's favorite tank cat, the CV-33. The CV-33, also known as the Caro Veloce, was made when tank cat designs were still seen as a viable option. Against a force mostly comprised of soft targets, for example Ethiopians, they performed very well. However, if an enemy had something that's harder than mushy skin, let's say another tankette, they were practically next to useless. I'm still not sure why teams still use tankettes, it just seems like the only thing tankettes are seen as viable are in the recon role or being meat shields. The match ends with the P-40 taking out the FT. On a date. The second major battle is Orai against Chihatan. Apparently they won against the Australians, I don't know. Where flying above, we see two P1Y1s, a J1N1, and five Kawasaki Ki-78s. We also see a Japanese Type 10 main battle tank and an OI, which was Japan's failed attempt at making a super heavy tank, where when being tested, the suspension would either break or get stuck in the mud. The only evidence supporting that it even existed were the blueprints, test reports, and that one track piece that was recovered. I also almost forgot to mention that we see a Japanese OH-1 attack gender copter and a Taylorcraft L2 recon plane. Both teams bow and start the match. The Mark IV starts taking heavy machine gun fire from Chihatan, subsequently shooting down Shark Team's flag. This provokes them to charge in alone. Chihatan, instead of Banzai charging the enemy, uses ambush tactics, disguised as charge tactics. Chihatan then charges in place, thus taking out the Mark IV, and then goodbye charges, basically running away. Chiatan continues to bully Orai until nightfall, and heavy rain sets in. Orai tries to take the highlands, however, the heavy rain prevents them from doing so, so they settle near a river, with their backs against the water. However, in the river lies a lurking threat. Two Type II Kamis. The Type II Kami was Japan's first amphibious tank, produced between 1942 and 1943. The Kami was built on a heavily modified Type 95 Hago chassis, first seeing combat in Guadalcanal where it was used in a failed amphibious attack, with around 180 built. The B-1 bis is taken out by one of the Kamis, which also loses one of its floaty bits, and still somehow floats. Chiatan's main force then step charges, whatever that is, and focuses their fire on the Hetzer, or Ice Flag Tank, thus tempting the Porsche Tiger to move out of cover to protect it and allowing Chiatan to track the Porsche Tiger. Once the Tiger P is immobilized, Chiatan commits a how do you do charge, taking out the VK-45 from behind. Chiatan then goodbye charges and Orai chases after them. Chiatan realizes that they're being followed, so they turn around and head straight for Orai. They pass and Chiatan once again turns around and chases Orai. Now being chased, Orai fires machine gun rounds at Chiatan, which, if shells weren't dangerous enough for the commander sticking their hat out of the cupola, the machine gun route should be even more dangerous as there's a higher chance of them getting shot. God forbid they go against Anzio. Si, caro veloce? You're not entirely useless. During their pursuit, Chiatan realizes that it's not just them trying to run away, but rather they are deliberately getting lured in. However, for some reason, they continue to follow them, despite knowing it's a trap. The entire Chiatan team then falls down a ditch. Chiatan gets desperate and starts charging, but to no avail. Then, the commander of Chiatan suggested the words that no Japanese person should ever hear. Retreat. The episode ends with Chiatan retreating towards greater glory. I know that Girls and Panzer isn't everyone's can of root beer, but don't worry. Next month's video won't be about Gup. I just wanted to continue what a great man started. If you like this content, I heavily recommend seeing Potential History's channel. He's done a much better job on this subject and also much better videos. This has been Autistic Nerd, and I'm going to play my video games now.